So, back in January, for some reason my left leg just started really hurting. Well, there was one day that I woke up and I couldn't move my leg. Like, I couldn't move it, I couldn't put pressure on it, I couldn't walk on it. So I was pretty much just on crutches for that entire weekend and the rest of that week. And I just didn't walk on my leg. It hurt way too much. I could not walk on it at all. And so my mom went on ahead and found urgent care that had a sports clinic, I guess you can say in it. The doctor finally came in like an hour and a half later. He's trying to have me bend it and straighten it. And it's kind of bending it wasn't such an issue. I could bend it pretty well, but straightening it was absolutely horrible and so he's like all right i'll schedule some x-rays and we'll do some x-rays and so we're like okay and about 30 minutes later he came back and he said there's nothing on the x-ray so i don't know why he would be hurting the only thing i can think of would be a tumor and we're like a tumor wow that's kind of crazy that's like a big issue so he's like i want you guys i want to schedule a uh, blood work and an mri to get done 30 minutes of getting back home from the mri the same urgent care doctor that said that it was probably a tumor called us and he said that they found a tumor in my lower left femur and it's most likely sarcoma which is a type of cancer so my mom and dad found out because the doctor told them and then I walked in on my parents because I was going to ask them a question, but when I walked in, I saw my mom was crying and like my dad was kind of just, he didn't seem all there. And so I'm like, what's wrong with mom? And my dad's like, um, we got some news today that we're not very happy about. We can't come sit down. And, I'm like, and at that point, I'm thinking in my head, what's all the bad things that I've done recently? My dad went ahead and told me that I had a... I had a tumor in my leg that was most likely cancerous and so at that point I was kind of I was shocked I didn't really know what to say or how to feel I was kind of just like oh okay so my dad was explaining like what we we're gonna do the next day and what doctors we we're gonna talk to how everything's gonna be in my mind I was just kind of like thinking like like, wow, this is crazy. I never thought I'd get cancer, blah, 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 blah. This is weird. And then it kind of finally, like, dawned on me that, wow, I have cancer. This is, like, something that could actually kill me. And, I mean, like, it's like, you don't really think about things that are going to kill you until you're faced up against it. Because, like, you just walk out your normal every day, like, oh, okay, cool birds, sun, skies, whatever. When I t was told I had cancer, I was like faced up with the thought of death and that I'm gonna be battling death. And so at that point, I kind of got really emotional and started crying and I was like hugging my mom and I was like laying in her lap. Just by looking at the tumor, they could see that it was Ewing sarcoma. Had surgery for my port, did my first round of chemo, which was absolutely horrible. My cancer is an aggressive bone cancer, so my tumor is stuck on the bone and soft tissue around that bone. So what they have to do in order to get it off is they have to do the six cycles of chemo, and then they have to cut the bone out. So there's two options for that. There's either a full knee replacement. Another option was the rotation plasty. And rotation plasty is where they go on ahead and they literally cut from about the middle of my shin and maybe a little bit above the middle of my uh, above my thigh or a little below the middle of my thigh and cut it out and take it out and they take my ankle and they turn it 180 degrees and they reattach it to my thigh my foot's now on backwards at that point and my ankle works as my knee joint and then I'd have to wear a prosthetic. The problem with the rotation plasty is that I am almost, they said I'm pretty much fully grown. Well, with mine, since it's fully grown, they would have to cut it at a different, uh, at different lengths. And if it got infected, then at that point, it'd just be a full leg amputation. So they had the surgeons and they had the uh, anesthesiologists and the plastic surgeons come in just talking to us about what's gonna happen, how it's gonna go. So they finally went ahead and started wheeling me back. We actually got into the operating room. I just remember them putting in the uh, anesthesia, kind of getting me prepped and putting the breathing mask on me. I just remember talking to the doctors and just telling them that the, the anesthesia is kicking in because everything started getting like all woozy and wonky and I started getting dizzy and I was just out. I started 
physical therapy. It was painful, but they said that I'm doing a lot better than expected. Doing a lot of anti-nausea medications, been sleeping a lot. It's getting better, getting easier, just... God, I gotta take it one day at a time. Can't think too much into the future. Just gotta work on what you got right now, so. Anything that you've learned from this that you would like to share with everyone watching to help them better themselves and their lives? Life is tough, but if you look at the bad things, that's all it's gonna be is. It's gonna be tough and it's gonna suck. You gotta look at the good things to make sure that you can get through life. Having cancer and doing all the chemo and stuff has opened my eyes to a wider view in the world and just kind of shown me who your real friends are and just shown me how much people will love and support me and just shows how strong I've like how strong I really am and have really become don't doubt yourself on anything don't ever think you are less than what you are and always know that you are the strongest thing on this earth Good job. All right, buddy, I'm taking off. See you tomorrow, okay? See you tomorrow? See you tomorrow. <laughs> Love you, bud. Love you. Stay strong. Want to say any anything to the viewers out there? Stay strong, work hard on things, and watch my brother's videos. Okay, good enough. Guys, if you have anything positive to say, just shoot me a message. Shoot me a message on Instagram or on YouTube. He'd love to hear the positivity. Anything helps, guys. Anything really does. He's got a GoFundMe account. I can link that down there too if you guys want to go donate. That always helps as well. That's how we kind of pay for our trips out here and pay for this goob to be comfortable and Give me Skittles. be treated. Not Skittles. <laughs> <That's>, <laughs> we don't use your phones to pay for Skittles. No. Okay? You want to do the whole... You want to do it? You guys are in a good part of town out here. Okay. I mean, that's, a, that's handy to have everything. Yeah, you yeah, we got our ID and yeah. Walmart right up the road, and McDonald's and Costco. And That works, huh? Yeah. Because you're helping. You need some help. Sure. Right. Yeah. Yeah. We were in the uh, opposite. Alright guys, so we're back in the hotel room. Um, the day before, we're gonna go hit the lake. So tomorrow morning, we're gonna go out, get some breakfast, uh, and then we're gonna hit the lake. You know, obviously I've never fished here before, so it's gonna be really cool uh, getting out there. I'm really, really excited. You can see my new little deal over there. My clothes, don't mind my clothing. You guys can see I'm not here just to go fishing. Uh, I'm here to be here with my brother and help, along, help him along his journey, because it's, it's quite a bit, you know, it's been quite a bit on our family. It sucks to be up here for that reason, but I'm excited to get out to the lake. It's kind of just been patiently waiting for some downtime and waiting to see how he feels, because obviously I want to be here with him first as my main priority. That's why I'm here. Um, and then fishing is just kind of a bonus. I mean, it's Minnesota, there's lakes everywhere. So uh, my dad's gonna come with me and he's gonna fish slash film. So it'll be cool. We can get kind of a third person view. Uh, it's not just gonna be filming from my chest the whole time. So it should be fun. We are finally to the lake. It is right down there and it is looking so, so beautiful. I can't, you know, you see lakes like this and it's like, do they really exist? I mean, you see the lakes down in Arizona and they look nothing like this. Like, look how much green is around us. But today it's gonna be my dad and I fishing. There's pike and bass in here. We're gonna wet some lines. We got some rods, so we're ready to fish, guys. 
So shoot some more B-roll around here as we're getting ready to go down there. And soon enough, we're gonna be on the water catching some fish for you. Senko. He's going to be working a little slower along the bottom. I'm going to be throwing this swim bait here and just kind of working it slow along the edges of the grass. Got one. Yep, yep. There we go. On the swim bait. There we go. First fish. First fish of the day, caught him in these trees right here behind us on this Kitek swim bait. Four point, I think that's a 4.8 right there. Pretty big swim bait for a little dude like that, but he's hungry. There we go guys, first fish of the day. We'll get a little release on him and let him get a little bigger, hopefully like 10 times the size of this guy. First fish. All right, we got number one on the day on that Kitek. Let's catch some more. There's a fish. There you go. Yep. Right at the sink. Not a bad fish either. Pitch it in there and rise it sank down there. Homeboy came up and got it. Woo! Dark fish too. All right, on that Kitek again. All I did was I threw it right there by that brush or by that bush over there. And as soon as it sank, I just watched my line and it started taking off, set into him. He was there. Another beautiful little Chester Woods bass there. Number two on the day. And let him go. All right, let's catch some more. Oh, it's a big bass over there. Yeah, right against the shore. Pinned a bluegill up there, it looked like. Just bloom. There's fish. Yep. It's a good fish, Dad. fish there. Crank that Kitek. Finally, look for a real bite. And he was there to thump it. Good little, maybe pounder. Smoke the Kitek. All three of my fish have come off this Kitek. It's super cool to be at a lake like this and uh, the scenery is just so different. Here we go, little guy. He's off. Fish number three in the books in Minnesota, in our Minnesota adventure. So cool. We got over here to a new lake just to try out to see, and my dad <laughs> already has a fish. That's a, that's a fatty. First cast. Yeah, it's probably the, the best fish of the day. Nice Minnesota bass right there. Yeah. Nice, Dad. That's awesome that, fish, huh? yeah. What a little you? more excitement than the other place. What were you throwing? Just a worm. Uh, a little trick worm? Yep. I almost thought that was a smallmouth because of how like golden it is. Nice yeah, fish. Send him back. There he goes. Yep, nice, probably, Dad. Uh, I don't know, six feet off the end of the shoreline there. He just nailed it. I hit the pike. I hit a pike. A large mouth. Dang it. I was so excited, Dad. <laughs> I was like, it's gotta be a pike. It's gotta be a pike. Uh, it's a little largey. Pike, pike, pike. Pike, pike, pike. Pike, pike, pike. pike. No. no, not so much. It's a little large mouth. That's funny. It's a round fish right there. Got a thick mouth on it. I thought it was a pike for sure. I was like, oh, I'm on. 
Come on, I've got a pike. But there's the little brown guy. Little green dude. So we're gonna let him go. Just gonna toss him right back in, guys. And he's gone. Alright guys, so that wraps up the video. I am home safely in Arizona now. So I know it's kind of an emotional video. Um, it's a lot different than the videos I usually post. I really just want to show you guys why I was in Minnesota and what we were doing up there um, and that we even went in the first place because I kind of just went without like warning and we just kind of went. We were out there for three weeks. If you guys didn't get it at first, my brother got diagnosed with a bone cancer called A-wing sarcoma. Uh, it's bone cancer in his knee. Um, so basically we had to go to Rochester because they're the only people or I should say they're the best people at performing the surgery for getting uh, that tumor removed. Initially we thought he was going to get rotation plasty which is like the backwards foot surgery but the night before the surgery we found out that he didn't need that surgery and he could just get his knee replaced so he got to keep his leg which is great. He's doing good. He's making a speedy recovery. Um, we're just kind of hoping for the best. We're hoping nothing else comes up and that his leg will recover good and he'll grow into it and it won't get infected and it'll just kind of be okay from here. That's what we're hoping. You know, with that kind of stuff, with cancer and how low your immune system is, you're prone to so much. Uh, it's very scary even after the surgery. Uh, once they got the tumor out, they found out that he's cancer free, which is great. They still have to do some chemo afterwards just to make sure that everything is out. But so far, according to the doctors and what they, they took out and the scans, uh, he is cancer free, which is awesome. You know, we've been, been through a lot. Uh, it's gone by so quick though. Uh, we've gotten so much help by so many people uh, just donating or as doctors, uh, the nurses, the social workers, everyone has just chipped in. And we are so blessed to have the help that we've gotten. It's, it's incredible. I can't thank you guys enough and I know he can't say thank you enough. He is one lucky kid. I mean, 15 going through cancer is very scary, uh, but he's gotten the best treatment. Um, and they've taken really good care of him. So a huge thank you to all you guys who are watching this that have helped him or donated or want to. Um, if you guys do want to donate or send him some love, uh, you guys can hit me up on my Instagram or send me an email. Uh, I got both of those linked down below. So just go there and you guys can share some love. All right, so I'm gonna wrap up this video now. I know it's, <laughs> it's been a pretty long video. So I hope you guys enjoyed the video. I just want you guys to enjoy life and coming from someone who's had to deal with this now for a few months, just take every second of it, guys. Love your family, love your friends, you know, don't take anything for granted. Just enjoy life, because you never know. You never know when something like this is gonna come up to you, and it just is very humbling seeing someone go through this and just knowing that your problems are so little compared to what they deal with on a daily basis. So guys, just stay humble, enjoy life, and love those that are close to you. I'll see you guys in the next video. I'm in the bathroom in his room waiting for him to get done peeing in his bottle. What? Gotta do what you gotta do, I guess. Yeah. Still not decent. <laughs>